there is a trade-off between the two of them. Now, if we want to reduce the probability of a type 1 error, we really, really, really want to be sure that we never reject the null hypothesis when we shouldn't, then there's a very good chance that there are times that we should and we don't. And so you can't have your cake and eat it too. If you want to be sure about one, then the probability of the other one will increase. So let's have a look at this one, an example. We're investing in a new product, and we're going to invest if more than 30% of the market want to buy. So a null hypothesis is that the proportion who want to buy is 30% or less, and our alternative hypothesis is that proportion who want to buy is more than 30%. So our null hypothesis... Um, okay, if it's true, that the null hypothesis is true... Should we invest? <laughs> That's right. We shouldn't invest. I saw some shaking head. So shouldn't invest. It's a, and also that little thumb thing's probably a bit of a hint there. Bad product. <laughs> Okay, if the null hypothesis is false, that means we've got evidence that people we want to buy is more than 30%, then we should invest. It's a good product. Okay, now say we rejected the null hypothesis, we decide to invest, we say, yay, this is a good thing to do. That's why the person's happy, we're going to invest. If we don't reject the null hypothesis and so we say that this is the case, then we do not invest. Okay, so if we decide to invest and it's a good product, then we're correct and we're happy. If we decide not to invest and it's a bad product, then we're correct and we're happy. thing is, it's really hard to know. If we decide to invest and it's a bad thing to do, this is a type 1 error, and we could lose lots of money because we invest in something that's then a failure. Okay, so we invested when we shouldn't and lost money. Okay, if we have a type 2, un er type two error, what happens is we say, no, we're not going to invest, but in fact it would have been a good product. But the problem is you can't actually ever know this unless some competitor comes out with something and you realise that you should have done it. I guess you'd know then. So we missed an opportunity. Okay, now I've got a question here. Which type of error would you prefer to make? Would you rather invest when you shouldn't and lose money? Or would you rather miss out on investing in something that's really good and miss out on an opportunity? Hands up who would rather have a type 1 error. Hands up those who would rather have a type 2 error. Right, welcome to the real world of banks. This is why lots and lots of things don't get started because banks always like this one much better because they don't care if people missed out, but they sure as heck do not want people to do things that might be risky and will go down. So most people, and there's always a tendency towards that. So when you're saying we have to be really, really sure here, just bear in mind that you could be missing out on that. And in MSI 101, which is in the second semester, we talk about decision trees and risk analysis and so on, and how your personal attitude towards risk affects the decisions that you make. And it's to do with how you feel about whether you're going to lose things or whether you miss out on an opportunity. Okay, in terms of this course, what you need to know is it's always a trade-off. One way to avoid a type 1 error is to never reject the null hypothesis, but then you've got a greater risk of a type 2 error. And so what it matters to you is the importance of each type of error. And you can imagine in things like medicine, you, you really don't want to miss diagnosing a person who's got cancer, but at the same time, you don't want to tell a lot of people that they've got cancer when they haven't. And so you've got your trade-off there between type 1 and type 2 errors. Okay, that will do for now. Tomorrow we're doing regression, and that'll be just about it for Module 6. Get going on 6A now.